And we are on to our last video for 10.2 sequences. Next, we'll move into series. Let's go. Let's go. So we have a squeeze theorem for sequences. Just like we had a squeeze theorem limits, it works the same way. Saying if you have a function, but it's not a function, it's a sequence is bigger and you have a sequence that's smaller and you have something that's in between, but they're all going to the same place, then they all have the same limit. So for example, draw something up. Look how beautiful that is, huh? I'm gonna call this um, A sub n. We'll read all that nonsense in a second. And let's say we have a function that's doing this. And let's call that, or mm, I can't really call this the a to n axis. I gotta kind of leave it blank. And say that these are all our a sub n's. And then let's say that we have some b sub n's. It's always smaller or equal than a sub n. And then we have some c sub n that's in the middle, always in the middle, sometimes maybe equal. But if we look, if we can see that the limit of the bigger one is going to the same spot as the limit of the smaller one, then the thing that's in the frickin' middle has got to go to the same gosh darn limit. That's the squeeze there. Now we go back and we go, let the sequence a sub n comma sequence of b sub n and the sequence of c sub n be sequences with a sub n being less than or equal to b sub n less than or equal to c sub n. Sorry, I wrote b sub n being the smallest. For all integers n, the, for all integers n greater than, go away dog, some index big n. Lots of words, huh? But did you catch it? You got something bigger, smaller, something in the middle. They're all going to the same limit. It's the squeeze there. You need to calc one. I'm, done. I'm tired of talking about it. Sorry about my dog. So it says, find the limit of b sub n, which is equal to sine squared of n over n squared plus one. You remember playing this game? You remember playing this game where it looked like this, sine squared of x over x squared plus 1, and we'd want to know where the limit um, as x goes to 0 of this was, but we didn't have any tactics in order for us to solve this thing, so we used the squeeze theorem. It's, it, it's the same thing. So, we look, we see, hey look, there's a trig function. Sine of n is less than or equal to 1 is also greater than or equal to negative 1. But we don't actually have a sine. We actually have a sine squared. So if we have a sine squared, well, we can't have negative values, but sine can be negative, can it? It'd be between 0 and 1. Yeah? Yeah? We good? Okay, cool, cool, cool. So let's go. Let's let's try and figure this out because we're just trying to find the limit. So I, I want to claim that uh, 0 over n squared plus 1 is less than or equal than sine squared of n over n squared plus 1 is less than or equal to 1 over n squared plus 1. And all I've done is just taken the numerators and just set it up in the way that this is set up. All right, you remember doing squeeze there. Cool, cool, cool. Ah. And our game is we're trying to make the middle function turn into the limit. So once we're here, <coughs> let's give it a limit. And the, what we're talking about with limits of sequences, it's always our limit as n goes to infinity. Well, we already know the first one's zero, right? So we're just giving everything a limit as n tends towards infinity. And if we could solve the center, we would have already done it. We totally could solve the center without doing the squeeze theorem. But we're letting you know it still exists. And now we're going to evaluate the ends, not the center, the ends. This goes to zero. The denominator gets bigger on the last one. So that goes to zero. So we have that this is trapped in between zero and zero, hence the squeeze theorem. Bang! So if it's greater than or equal to zero, and it's less than or equal to zero, I call this the duh theorem. No shit, huh? 
Shocking. It's trapped between zero and zero. What could it possibly be? And really, the whole moral of this session that we're doing with all these limits, it's, we're just doing limits again. This section is just refreshing your mind that limits exist and that we need to, well, not always, but, but we need to be able to solve. So there's our game. Remember that this happens, and now we're going to move into something kind of strange. Oh, sorry about my little box down there. You don't need that. That usually means the proof is done, but we weren't really doing a proof. So here's our next one. And this might seem weird and not very useful now, but it's going to be highly useful as we move on. And there is a lot of writing here. There is a lot of writing. Um, all about these sequences, but let's kind of just ignore the sequence part and let's start thinking about things. So I just want to just go to these first two and just saying, all right, what if we had LN of, uh, I'm going to call it X and we had X sitting here. I just want to look at those and I want to raise them to powers. So if you're to raise LN of X to like the third power and you're is x to the third power and we have to make sure that everything like our x is greater than one i'm using x instead of um <coughs> i'm using x instead oops it's gonna be greater than one instead of ends just because i don't know our brains seem to see them a little bit better so as long as our base is bigger than one this is always going to be true it's always going to be true so the natural log looks like this X looks like this. Do you see that X actually grows faster? This one slows down our natural log. Hence why, once you raise it to a power, the X is always going to be bigger. Now let's jump over this one. That's just a lot of nonsense. And uh, let's jump over that one. And let's get into what's, what's going to matter for us. Because this is going to be huge. We're going to be seeing how things grow. We're going to need to compare them. And you don't have to show a bunch of work. If you can look at something and see that this grows faster than this, when you have a situation where you have, all right, well, we have X cubed over LN of X all cubed. Where does this go as the limit as X goes to infinity? I know I keep using X's, but come on, man. N's, X's, who cares? Well, since we know that the bottom grows slower than the top, then this must go to infinity. That's why we want these. So when we do our limits, we have a better understanding as to how functions work. So we don't have to do a bunch of algebra. Oh, I'm sorry, calculus. Um, to go get an answer. We could just state it. I don't have to do L'Hopital's five freaking times to solve that. Or three times. And just, just do it and get your answer. Because we know an X raised to a power, or I'm sorry, an N raised to a power, is always going to grow faster than a logarithm raised to the power. So now I know that the top is smaller. It grows slower. Hence, this is zero. All right, now let's move into them. Let's start having a quick discussion on these. Now, this is the ones that kind of got me and where I would struggle with. I didn't know which ones would grow faster than the others. Um, and we find out that do you even know what that n factorial is? Oh shoot, we better talk on it real fast. So we can say that three to the n, the limit is n tends towards infinity. It's going to grow slower. Let me take that limit out. It's going to grow slower than n factorial. And what is n factorial? Oops. It's one times two times three times four times to n minus 1, to n. That is n factorial. So we haven't seen it before. That's n factorial. And we say that that's going to grow faster than 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times dot, 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 3 to the n. Well, look, I mean, at first, it's slower. Look, 1 and 2. Look, it's bigger. 
And then we get to the three, and then it's going to go, oh, three, the four is bigger, then five would be bigger, then six would be bigger, then seven would be bigger. So n factorial, especially as the limit is n times force infinity, it will grow faster. It will achieve a fin infinity in a faster rate. Did you know there's different sizes of infinity? <laughs> and then even further, we have that n to the nth power is even bigger. Because this is n times n times n times n dot 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 to the n to the n minus 1 times n to the n. And we could see that as n is getting larger and larger, I mean, shoot, call it a thousand. You know what I mean? Those are all bigger. And this one's largest term, it's going to multiply as n, but we're going to multiply by n on every single freaking term. So we find out that any power to the power, n to the n, is going to be the largest, the fastest growing out of any of our sequences. It grows faster than n factorial, but oh my goodness, are we going to see a lot of n factorials? We're going to see a lot of them. So I'm just going to do one last piece because we're going to see them again. I'll talk about it. But yeah, n factorial. 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times, times n minus 1 times n. That is the definition. So if you were to have 0 factorial, this is by definition it equals 0. 1 factorial is 1. 2 factorial is 1 times 2, 3 factorial is 1 times 2 times 3, and I'm pretty sure you got it from there. So these are the things we're going to need to know how they grow. Well, we don't have to. You can go back and do all kinds of long, long algebra, doing L'Hopital's and stuff like that, or you could just know how things grow. And it's not going to help on every problem, but there might be two or three, which might make your life a heck of a lot easier. And uh, I like finding little tricks on tests to make things quicker. So possibly I'll give you a quick out if you know how things grow when you take an exam. And if you don't see it, don't worry. Algebra and calculus are still at your disposal. All right, I will see you in 11.3. We're going to move into series where we're going to start adding up the terms of sequences. See you.